Hi guys, it's Taylor and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about my favorite series other than Harry Potter of all time and that is The Nevernight Chronicle by Jay Kristoff. I'm gonna put these down because I can't hold all of these. So these books are fantastic but um, I'm gonna let my review speak for itself. Now if you haven't seen my Six of Crows um, pros and cons video uh, this is a new review format I'm trying out because I think it'll help me just get reviews out faster and that is basically to make a pros and cons list of reading this book or series. So um, let me know what you think about this uh, sort of approach down in the comments down below and let's get started. So The Nevernight Chronicle follows a young teenage girl named Mia Kuveri. She is the daughter of like this wealthy politician, is it Darius Kuveri? I think it was Darius Kuveri and her mother Alina Corvary? I think so. I'm really doing a great job. Off to a great start. And so basically, um, when she's a little girl, this uh, her father is about to lead a rebellion, but he is thwarted by Consul Skeva and hung. Uh, Mia is forced to watch her father's hanging by her mother, and her mother tells her never flinch, never fear, and never ever forget. Later on, Mia's um, mother and younger brother are arrested and taken away by Consul Skeva to this, basically, it's a prison called the Philosopher's Stone. Mia is able to escape and soon makes friend, finds out that she can sort of manipulate and befriend the shadows. So she and her pet shadow cat, Mr. Kindly, vow to get revenge and sort of exact that revenge on the man who she blames for tearing apart her entire happy family, Julius Skeva. Uh, it's mostly Julius Skeva. It's Julius Skeva, Cardinal Duomo, and Marcus Remus. She is adopted by this ex-assassin named Mercurio and basically sort of taught to be an assassin. When she gets old enough and comes of age, she does go to this like church of night that worships the night goddess and goddess of death and it's basically a school of assassins and she learns how to become an assassin and from there her story just kind of plays out um and her quest for revenge plays out and you get the idea that her and her ability to manipulate the shadows is meant for much more than that this is an interesting world i should know that the world of nevernight has three suns that are up in the sky at almost all times and then when they fall you are plunged into true dark so just wanted to let you know because i think that's a really interesting idea so i've been talking enough let's get to the pros and cons list the first pro these books are hilarious the tone used and the writing style used and a lot of the writing choices used i think really adds to the humor of this book so if you don't know the nevernight chronicle has a lot of footnotes which at first can be very daunting but it's a way for the narrator to sort of have an aside. So for example, you could, uh, the book could say something like, Mia stabbed Bob. And then the footnote would say, Bob, in fact, did not enjoy this. And it's sort of a way to in, um, add humor. And I think it's also a way to really build up the world, but we'll get to that later. But I really do think the tone of the writing and the humor of the book boosts what I would normally see as maybe a good-ish book to a fantastic book. Con. It can be really tough to get into these series. I was so close to DNFing the first book, but it takes until you get past the first 100 pages, which is basically until Mia gets to the Red Church, to really get invested in the book and the story. Once you do, you're basically gone, you've sold your soul, but it does take a while to get to that point. Pro. Um, th this book is for adults, I should note that. It is not young adult, despite what a lot of bookstores seem to think. Um, but there is smut in this book and it is really well written and I feel like that's really hard because it's really easy to make stuff like that cheesy but I feel like the writing associated with it is really well written and it does feel earned most of the time when characters are engaging in like sex and sex related stuff it does feel like it's earned and you can really feel the relationship between the characters whether it's romantic or just purely carnal I think it helps a lot. Con. Without giving getting into spoilers, one of the re main relationships in the book I think has a really strong foundation and that I could see how they could get together. However, I think the execution is a little off and maybe that's because I don't like really care for one of the characters in that relationship, but it does feel a little um a little off. I think it it does it's not really super earned and I think we could have used a little more 
build up or a little more growth of one of the characters before we really got into that relationship. Con, I think the last book is the worst in the series. It's not bad by any means, but it is the weakest, which I think is the biggest mistake of a series is when you start off like really strong and then sort of peter out. And I wouldn't say it peters out, but I will say the climax gets a little ridiculous. It, it I feel like what happens in the climax is that the main character fights one of the one of the big bads and it doesn't feel really well earned it's one of those like they haven't had a chance to build up any animosity so by the time it happens the characters are basically like I've been waiting for this showdown for five minutes you know I really would have liked a little bit more of a build-up to what it which should be one of the final climactic battles and it didn't really feel earned it was just a little okay I guess that happened and I thought it was over too quickly I would have liked to see more of a struggle that being said there is a lot of stuff about the final book that I think is a little weak and I think it does sort of bring the series rating down a little bit for me pro the world building and lore of these books I think is absolutely fantastic um the world is very weird in that I never want to travel there it's very harsh and cruel and very mean-spirited in a way that I think is stressful but it also is believable in that I, I totally buy how these characters can become assassins or want to become assassins or the situations they get in to sort of be a part of Mia's life. You know, it's believable because I, there aren't a lot of nice people in this world. And if there are, they don't, I don't think they last long. I would also say the footnotes really help with the world building. It doesn't make sense for Mia to say, look, there's a heffalump <laughs> and then she like sort of turns to the audience and goes for those of you who don't know a heffalump is xyz you know it doesn't make sense because she lives in this world she already knows what it is um it's one of my pet peeves in books where the characters live with like in the world like they are from the world that they are currently in and they don't know anything about it you know they don't know any of these common things and they need someone to explain it to them i think this is a really clever way to sort of circumvent that and I also think that it builds up on the history and the sort of literature of the world and it's a way to build it up without having the character sort of exposit all of this information. <laughs> I, would, I would say it's a very interesting world and one that I would actually like to see more of, if we're being honest. And we're gonna add a bonus pro here in that I don't think it should sway your decision one way or the other. It's just something that I feel needs to be said. And that is Sidonius, who shows up in God's grave. Um, he's my husband. So um, he's taken. So you can't have him. He's mine. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Except I do. He's mine. So that was my review of the Nevernight Chronicle. For those of you who don't know, I give the first book 4.5 out of 5 stars. The second book 5 stars. And the third book four stars. Overall I would give the series about a 4.5 rating. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's beautifully written. I do think that the ending sort of brings it down a couple notches because I think it's a little weak. However I still enjoyed all of these books and I did weep like a baby at the end of the third book. So 4.5 star rating for the whole series. That's about it. Have you read The Nevernight Chronicle? Do you agree with my statements? If you haven't read The Nevernight Chronicle, are you convinced? Are you not convinced? Let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know what you think of this new review style because I kind of like it. It makes things a lot easier for me and I always like things that make things easier for me. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.